Here are 10 ways to edit audio in Soundtrap. This audio clip will be used as the sample today. It is one note sung by soprano in a Bach cantata. Number one is trimming. If I hover my mouse over this clip, I can start to see some options and the trimming bars are down the bottom half of this clip on the right and left side. If I drag either side out a little bit, this extends the range of the clip. If I only want the one note, I'll trim it back to where I had it. And for finer control, I'll hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a Windows PC. And I can really hone in to exactly where I want it. Edit number two is fading. Again, I'll hover my mouse over the clip and up the top right and left corners this time. This white circle can be pulled in or out to create a fade. This is useful for softening the attack on a sample like this. Number three is copying and pasting. So if I wanted to make a rhythm out of this, there's a few ways to do it. I'll hover over the clip again. I'll click on it to select it. And then if I hit Control and C or Command and C on a Mac, that's copied it to the clipboard. And now wherever my playhead is, I can hit Control and V or Command and V and it will paste it. I can paste it as many times as I want. To control the rhythm that I compose here, I'll come up to my settings cog. I'll make sure that my grid size is set to 16th notes or semiquavers. And then these lines represent a semiquaver or a 16th note in the bar. I'm on bar 10 here. And each line here is going to be one E and a two E and a and so on. So I've just copy and pasted these. But another quick way of doing this is holding down the option key or the alt key on a Windows PC and dragging this to where I want it. So now I've got the rhythm one and two and. I'm gonna try for some syncopation here. Here's the metronome for context. Edit four is time stretching. Let's say I wanted this note to last a little bit longer, but I didn't want to trim it out because then I would get other notes in the sample. What I need to do here is go to the trim bars down the bottom right of the clip and while holding down alt, pull this out and it will stretch the region. If I want finer control over where this stretches to, I need to do one of two things. I need to turn off the magnet snap to grid function and then it will do it precisely where I want it. Or even with the grid snap on, I can hold down alt for the stretch region function and then also command or control and do it that way. I would have fast forwarded the video at this point, but that stretching took the guts of a minute and a half to do. While there's plenty of upsides to a web-based digital audio workstation, the downside is having to wait to do edits like that. Edit five is reversing the audio of a clip. When I hover my mouse over the clip, I get this edit button as an option. If I click that, it shows me all the ways in which I can edit this clip. I can change the name, I can fade in and out, and what we're gonna focus on now is reversing it. So just before I reverse it, here's what it sounds like before. And then hit edit, click reverse. And now this is what it sounds like after. So not a huge change here because it's such a short note, but on other, in other situations, this could actually create nice nuance between the same sound happening over and over again. Edit six is splitting a clip. I'm going to create a stutter effect here by splitting this clip into 30 second notes or demi semi quavers. I'll come up here to my settings cog. I'll change the grid size to 30 second notes. And now you'll see an extra line has appeared here. Selecting a clip and hitting command and E or control and E 
will make a split. I'm just going to do that a few more times. Then while holding down a white part of the grid, I'm going to select all of these clips and I'm going to create gaps of silence so that you hear the stutter effect by pulling in the trim on all of these. And now we should have a 30 second stutter effect. In context of the other parts. Edit 7 is repitching. So currently all of the notes here are the same note. But if I wanted to start to create melodies, I would need to change the pitch. I'm going to consider my first note here to be the tonic note or do. And I'm not entirely sure exactly what, what note this is just yet. But it doesn't matter if I pitch everything relative to that. So let's say I want to do do, re, mi. I'll keep the first one where it is. To change the pitch, I hover my mouse over the clip. I select the edit button and then I'll change the pitch up two semitones. So that will give me Do Re because Re or the second degree of a major scale is up one full tone. All of these numbers are representing semitones. This one will need to be up four semitones or a major third from our tonic to get the Mi note or third degree of a major scale. A few minutes later. And now our melody sounds like this. Edit 8 is merging clips. You would think you could just select all of these here, right click a clip and select the merge regions function. But unfortunately on audio clips this doesn't work in Soundtrap. What you actually need to do is come up to settings, go to merge tracks, then select the one track you want merged, select merge, and now you have a full track that's merged here. So obviously we're just gonna trim it down. This is an annoying workaround that you have to do. And now if I want to loop this melody for a few bars at a time, I can do that. Edit 9 is about adding effects to a clip. So I come over here to my instrument icon and now I can start to affect the sound of this in loads of different ways. Let's add reverb to begin with. Or we can add individual effects manually. The effects are categorized into different colors. Purple is harmonic distortion. So you get distortion, fuzz and overdrive. The pink is modulators. So anything that affects the phase or the stereo image. The teal color is delay. And then this light brown color is to do with compression and EQ. And this last one here is a volume control to up the input gain of whatever clip you have. Let's add a bit of stereo chorus and a bit of classic distortion. So a huge range of tools to change and manipulate any sound. So the last edit I wanna talk about is automation. To make this little melody we've made sound a little bit more interesting, there's a few things you can do to change it over time. Over here on the left, we have a few buttons. There's a record enable button, there's a volume control for the output volume. There's a solo button to solo this track so no other tracks are heard. There's a mute button so that this track can't be heard. And then this last one here is automation. If I click this, I can click on the automation lane and then I've a few automations to choose from. The easiest way to explain what automation is, is to actually show you this. So I'm gonna click pan for now. And then what I get is a reflection of this audio up here and a line going through it. What a pan automation is going to do is going to change this audio from the left speaker to the right speaker over time where I tell it to go. So if I click on this line I can create a little notch and then if I click on another space I create another notch and if I drag this up 
over time what's going to happen is the audio is going to start in the center line and then end up over in the right speaker if I click another notch and send it all the way over to the left speaker this is what you're going to get and I can change this as drastically as I want by keep at by clicking on notches and adding in more variants The other automations are to do with a sweep. So this creates the frequency range going from a muffled sound down here to a very bright sound up here. And the last one is volume. So let's say we wanted this to fade in over time. We could do something like this. And all of these automations are there for you to try and create more expression and musicality in the bits of audio that you have. Just trying to make things sound a little bit more interesting. So there are 10 ways to edit audio in Soundtrap.